Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's National Geographic Explorer Classroom. My name is Joe Grabowski, and I will be your host for today. We're really excited to be doing uh, Explorer Classroom live from the field in Petra, Jordan, and we're gonna meet our explorers in just one moment. But before we do that, we like to share a little bit with the National Geographic Map Maker Interactive, um, to give people a feel uh, for where everybody is uh, in the world. So I'm just gonna share my screen here really quickly. Just take a moment, there we go. And then now you should see the map. So this red X here, just outside of Guelph, Ontario, that's where I'm hosting from. We have classrooms joining us from St. Thomas and Barrie. And if I back out a little bit more, you can see classrooms in Manitoba, San Antonio, Texas, as well as New York. And if we go across the Atlantic, you can see here in Jordan, this big red X, that is where our Nacho team is joining us today. So. We're very excited to have three explorers joining us. We have uh, Corey Jaskalski, Kenny Broad, and Chris Milburn. And they're in Jordan on an expedition with Virtual Wonders. They're using all kinds of amazing technology uh, to map and scan uh, this amazing location and then bring it back in VR and AR. So uh, guys, it's so great to have you joining us from the field. Can you hear me, guys? Yes. Yeah. Hi. All right, good. I just can't hear. Oh, their volume's turned down. Sorry, gang, can you hear me now? <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to wait just a second. We, we had them and we just lost their signal. So let's give them a second to exit and come back in. But we had a beautiful view uh, at the very beginning. We could see they were standing on the trail. Um, you could see kind of the canyon in the background. And on both sides of them, they were surrounded by some of the uh, amazing ruins uh, of Petra. So let's just give them a moment and see if they can get back in with us. Sometimes they have to pop in and pop back out. So we'll give them a moment. And while we do are waiting, I see we had another classroom jump in and join us. That's awesome. That's our classroom, I believe. Let me just double check. Yes, that's our classroom joining us from Manitoba. So welcome, grade eights. Great to have you in. And we're just waiting to see if we can get the connection back. We had a beautiful connection uh, a moment ago, but we just lost them. So let's give them a second to get back in. Anyone viewing live today via YouTube, don't forget there's a YouTube chat sidebar and you can send in some questions there. Let us know uh, who you are and your grade level. And as soon as we can get them back in, um, we'll let them take over and tell us about what they've been up to so far. In fact, I'll just send them a quick message just to let them know um, we lost them and see if they can pop back in. So let's see if we can do that quick. Oh, hey. you're back. All right. Jo Jordan, Welcome back. Cell signal, but we're making it happen. All right. All right. Well, you you just pass missed it back on to one of our photographers, Suzanne, here. Let's Hi. see if we can get the All camera right. back okay. in reverse. Can you hear me now? We see you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, we can hear, you. hear you. Okay, you just missed the world's greatest intro, but that's okay. Kenny, why don't you take over? We know you do a good All job. Right. I'll start talking, and let me start by saying hello to everyone. I think we might have a classroom from Colombia. Como esta? Buenos dias. And here in Jordan, in this part of the world, the greeting is salam aleikum. So salam aleikum to everyone as well. So... Let me briefly tell you what's going on here. We're at Petra, which is in uh, Southern Jordan. And it's what many people think, or actually I think it's been voted now one of the new seven wonders of the world. And it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's an amazing archeological site that covers uh, about five square miles. And what we're doing here is we're mapping the area, but not traditional mapping with a compass and pencil and graph paper. 
but we're actually using new technology, uh, including lasers, so LIDAR, which allows us to send laser beams. And the, the machine can then calculate how much time it takes for the laser to come back. We use pretty traditional cameras, but we use them in a different way in the way we take the pictures. We're using drones with very high resolution cameras. We're gonna bring in some satellite data later. We've got a camera that can spin 360 degrees. So the idea behind it is how can we get a very detailed map of this area and the critical parts of this area that can be used for archeology span without people necessarily having to come out here and do the measurements. You can send them the data and they can study it. You can use it to uh, manage the site so you know how many people have passed through, how much damage gets done, how much damage may be happening due to natural erosion, to storms and things like that. You can actually go to critical areas and then do 3D printing of the areas. So you can use it for souvenirs, you can use it for education. And really the ultimate goal is a three dimensional model that you can use for uh, virtual reality that you could be in your classroom and follow us here in Petra. So these are the things we're working with the, the, the government of Jordan to try to do. And we're here for about a month. So we thought we'd take a little bit of time and tell you a little bit more about the specific technology. I'll turn it over to our chief engineer, Corey Jaskowski. Hey guys and girls. Um, so yeah, like Jenny said, we're here in Petra and doing this 3D scanning. And one of our biggest challenges is just how big this place is. If, uh, if Suzanne can look around a little bit here, we have what's called the Oblique Tomb over there. But this whole place is full of caves and tombs all around us. You can see some caves over there and some uh, more there. And as she keeps going around, you'll see some giant blocks called the Dijin blocks that are uh, along the road here. And that's just a little bit of it. We're, we're at just a tiny bit into Petra. We're barely at, even at the entrance. There's miles and miles and miles of these tombs and sites that we need to 3D scan all of them. So, so how do we do that for such a big place? Like Kenny was talking about, we have uh, a bunch of special equipment, yeah. including Chris, um, <laughs> the, a bunch of special equipment, including laser scanners and drones and special cameras for doing photogrammetry. And the reason we have to bring all this stuff is because this place is so big and we're trying to get it in such detail. So the laser scanners reach out almost uh, 500 feet around us and see everything around and get 3D maps of that. And the drone can go a th thousand feet up in the air or more and look down on everything and get us maps and 3D scans from that direction. And then our photographers can walk around and get all the view from the ground. But see, our goal here is not to build maps just so we can say, here is one part of Petra, here's another part but everything around us, we're trying to capture in ultra high detail. Like when we scanned this site, which we did, we scanned over here with the drones, we would get this building behind us in great detail, but we'd even get this rock. And I gotta be a little careful picking up rocks because one of the last one I picked up had a scorpion underneath it called the Death Stalker, which is sort of a scary name for a scorpion. Um, so, but even this rock we would get in radical detail with many, many points. So we'd have even this rock 3D scan. So the whole world around us is what we're scanning in this place. And part of the reason for that is, is you don't always know what's important for archeology span and science and understanding the ancient culture that we're studying until you actually have all of the data. So we don't know what parts are most important sometimes. So that's why we capture all of this uh, along with being able to show it in virtual reality. And um, Chris will tell you a little bit more about what we're doing in the field, but a lot of the work that I've been doing, aside from planning the sites and where we're going to scan, is using the drone. And the drone is really an incredible piece of technology here uh, to really see the sites and to 3D scan it. And in Jordan, no one can have a drone. You can't buy a drone at the store. You can't bring one in. It's completely illegal here. And so we had to have special permission from the Air Force and from the government of Jordan since we're doing this special work to bring it in and do our work. But um, for us, it's the coolest way to see Petra because instead of just standing on the ground, which is beautiful as well, we can go up a thousand feet in the air and with our camera, just look down on all of the sites, all of the ancient Nabataean sites. And so uh, we'll yeah. Chris tell you a little bit and then maybe Kenny can tell you about history, the Nabataean yeah. history. That would be perfect. So a lot of what we're doing is using cameras like this one for photogrammetry. Now photogrammetry is a really cool idea. The, the idea is that you take pictures from different angles and using the information in each picture and each perspective, 
we can start to understand what the shape of something is using some really special computer software. So if this rock down here, if I wanted to go ahead and take pictures of this rock to model it, I would do a circle like this. And eventually I'd be capturing every angle of that rock and we would know what all the surface structure is. Using the programs, we get the geometry, we get the color, we get the texture, and it looks just like real. And we can actually use measurements in the future to do restoration, to do protection, to do studies um, from an archeological and just from an artistic standpoint. Another cool thing that we can do is when we have big, big buildings like this, we stand way far back. We take pictures all along and it combines, like we said, with the drones and the laser data to get a really amazing both virtual uh, copy of, of the site and to uh, get something to look at for years to come. If the site is lost, if something happens to it, damage, you know, hurricane, anything like that, probably not a lot of hurricanes out here. <laughs> but we can eventually uh, find ourselves with a, a millimeter accurate um, site study. And for something this big, that takes tons of people. So we have a team of, I think at one point we were up to 11 people out in the field. And we usually have four photographers going. We have 360 degree panoramas that are going. We have Kenny on the laser and Corey on the drone. And between all of us, we, we really burned through a lot of gear. We, for those of you who know uh, data storage, we're probably going up to a terabyte a day some days. So lots and lots of data, lots and lots of pictures, and eventually it'll turn into something really cool. All right. And before, before Kenny talks a little bit about the history, um, Joe, if we have time after Kenny talks, um, we may or may not lose signal, but we'll try to walk over and take you guys for a tour of the Oblis Dome. Sounds like a good plan to me. Okay. All right. So you can see, watch out, the wind's going this way. It's pretty dry here. It's hard to believe that many thousands of people lived here, but this was a heavily occupied area from about, uh, let's see, about 400 BC Mostly, it was about 100 BC to three or 400 AD that was its prime time. And it was the Napatean culture up in, in classrooms. But this was a group that was loosely formed from different Arab tribes from all around this region. And this was a center, a center point where a city was built around it. Because if you've ever seen the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark, one where they come through that narrow canyon. Oh, I'm sorry. What is it called? Indiana Jones. Right? Indiana, Indiana Jones. Old. <laughs> Indiana Jones. Raiders right of the Lost Ark. I think it was the original one, right? Yeah, yeah. you were in it. Yeah. <laughs> I borrowed the hat just for this. And they come through and then you see this amazing structure that's carved out into a wall. There's no reception there, so we couldn't do our songs there. But that's where we are now. But there were thousands of people but you look around and you say, well, how did they survive with no water? They developed by carving into the rock from all miles and miles around an intricate drainage system. And they would store the water in these underground cisterns. So they stayed out of the sun, they wouldn't evaporate, but they accumulated so much water that they actually had beautiful open pools for decoration. And they had flowing water in almost every one of these structures we go into. You can see canals, you can see at the bottom of the floor where we collect water, and then it would go down beneath. Eventually, they were taken over by the Romans, and one of the ways that the rock conquered them, and it took a long time, was to cut off these water rings so when it rained, how it would all collect from the watershed. So really, it's amazing, obvious, beautiful facades, but to me, what she survived here, and it was this amazing hydrological system that they developed, a lot of which we could learn lessons from now in terms of how we conserve and store our water. So many of these areas that we walk through, we go through different cultures, right? The Nabataean cultures, you have Bedouin and Arab culture that's still here. So there's still people that were living in these caves up till not long ago. And once you get out of the park of Petra, people still live in the caves and they'll migrate with their goats and their sheep and camels to different parts where there's enough uh, greenery for the animals to eat or where they can get enough water. And we were at a site not too long ago near a Bedouin camp where they had Neolithic ruins that archaeologists, so 
So those are maybe 8,000 years old or so. So this area has been occupied, a very harsh area to live in for a long time. And it shows you, if you can, the ingenuity that people have long used and that maybe we could learn some lessons from. So I don't know if um, we can start. Usually we take questions, Joe. Is that how we're doing it today? It's hard. We're doing this on a cell yeah. phone instead of a computer, so we can't see the classroom. Yeah, no worries. That was great, guys. Thanks for that little overview. So what I'll do is I'll just start introducing the classrooms. We'll give them all a chance to, to ask a question. So let's get the first classroom up and ready here. So our first class, uh, we're going to go right to Bogota in Colombia. We've got two first grade classes joining us today. Let me turn their microphone on. To figure out how, how long this wall hey, is. First graders, how, how are you? this rock is shape of this piece of whatever. Okay. And they're, use, they're doing that by using pictures, but also we... Okay, I don't think they're ready for a question yet. So let's go to... Um, here we go. Mrs. Derubis's grade fours are joining us in New Rochelle, New York. Let me turn their microphone on. But are there ones? I did. Yeah. Enterprise used cars. Huh? How's it going, grade fours? <laughs> All right, who's got a question? Um, how long do you think this whole thing will take? Um, you mean our, our project will take approximately 30 days in the field, but then for about for every day that we're working collecting the images, it takes 10 times, so 10 days to actually do the computer processing and cleaning it up and putting it in a form that's useful. And that's what Corey has done a lot of original work, putting together computer programs. So it's that's one of the things that's great. We've got photographers, we've got people flying drones, and then we have a whole computer team. So we're all learning different things from each other. Maybe, I don't know if Corey wants to say anything about the process sure sure, sure. yeah the, the processing to make it so we can see it all in vr and be beautiful will be probably it would take uh, a year if we just used a few people but we'll probably use a lot of people on this maybe take six or nine months and um the uh yeah basically the computer program is really cool because it can take the laser scans the photographs and all the drone data and merge it all together into this 3d model but then from there what we do to make it really perfect and beautiful and to clean it up is we have a team of 3D artists and our 3D artists worked on a lot of really cool movies like Where the Wild Things Are. They worked on uh, Deadpool and Star Wars and they're really good at taking 3D data and making it perfect and clean. And that's our team, uh, Jeff and Omar back at the office that's gonna help take this data and, and clean it up. <laughs> yep, and Matt, our programmer, yep. All right. All right. Very cool. Let's go to Mrs. Dudley's class. They're joining us from San Antonio in Texas. And Mrs. Dudley, if you don't mind right. turning your microphone on for me, you just have to turn it on for me today because I can't control it on your iPad. Hey, grade twos, can you hear me? We can hear you. We can hear you on the side. Oh. Great, dude. You're about right. Mrs. Dudley, just turning her microphone on for us. Can you hear me? All right. I can hear you. Um, All right. Who's got a question? Come on up and be nice and loud. Um, you said it's going to take 30 days. How many people are, are involved in this project for 30 days? <laughs> Okay, I don't know if you guys heard that, but I can relay it. They said, yeah. uh, they said your expedition, you said it's 30 days. How many people are actually going to be out there for the whole 30 days? I think we have six people out here for the full 30 days, and the rest of us through different times. Woo. Kenny's for maybe three weeks, and I think I was only here for 10 days. So, um, And we have a whole lot of other people involved. So there's the three of us, and I think uh, we have a photographer and a writer here that are um, – not part of our team, but are here to co cover the story that we're doing. And we have um, we have uh, a couple of other people that are helping us out and photographers and a great team. Yeah. And one, one other part is there's a group of archeologists here that work at the park that we spend three days doing different sorts of training activities with. So teaching them about some of the gear we use, 
but also working with them to say what kind of gear do they have here so they can continue this work. Right, right now here in, in this part of the world, in Muslim culture, it's Ramadan. So you've got a month where you fast during the day. So it's hard for people to come out and work hard during this, this, part, of the, this part of the holiday. But the holiday will be over and then people will join us from the, the Jordanian archaeology groups here. So we'll get more people on our team. And that's why, you know, with the company Virtual Wonders, we always want to be able to continue the work even when we're not able. 30 days might seem like a really long time to be in the field, but this is a big place and we're never going to be able to get everything. So we'd like to be able to give the skills, give the tools to people who live in these places to protect it forever and not just while we're here. In fact, you can finish school, <laughs> go to college, yeah. study archaeology, and there'll still be a lot of work to do. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. And there'll Seriously. be a bunch of new Come tools. Come join us. Yeah. Seriously. All right. Pretty awesome. Well. <laughs> great invitation. Uh, Mrs. Sandbrook's class. They are great fours joining us in Bowmanville, Ontario. Let me turn their microphone on. Hey, great fours. How are you? Hey. All right. Who's got a question? I do. Go ahead. Um, how how old is all the equipment? How old all the equipment? Well, our oldest piece of equipment <laughs> is Kenny Broad. <laughs> Fifty-one. <laughs> More than a half a century old. But but most of the equipment is very very new. So our laser scanner, um, we just yeah. bought it uh, a couple weeks ago. And it's a very fancy one, so it's a little scary to carry it all over here in a backpack. But um, and the the drone that we have is the, one of the newest ones that just came out yep. um, as well, with a super high resolution camera on it. And even most of the cameras are new, so yeah. we're using um, to do the scanning. It, you know, it, it takes so much effort for everyone to come out here and to do this work that we want to have the best equipment that we can so that we're getting the best results we can uh, out here with all of our time and energy. So very, all the equipment's very new, except for Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> all right, excellent. Let's check in with our class in Columbia again. Let me see if hey, grade one, can you hear me? Samantha, can you hear me? Okay, they might be having mic trouble. They can't seem to hear me. So let's go to Mrs. Gullahar, or Mr. Gullahar's class, grade two is joining us in San Antonio, Texas. Mr. Gullahar, if you don't mind turning your mic on for me, and then go ahead with the question. Okay. Chris, can uh, you look closer? Yeah. Guys, I'll relay that question for you. Um, okay. If you're wondering, what's the historical significance of Petra? Well, it, it's a time period in a part of the world where we're always trying to learn more about. When we were talking to the Jordanian, ar Jordanian archaeologists, they were saying what they're very interested in is seeing the transition from the earlier period, so let's say the Iron Age, the, from the Stone Age to the Iron Age, all the way through to the Nabataean period, so that's, you know, 100 or so more years uh, BC, and then all the way up through the Roman conquest. So depending on what time period you're interested in, you can study things in depth, but one of the interesting things we think about history and time as a set period of time, but it's always changing, it's always uh, in movement, in different cultures, meeting each other. This was a major, major hub for traders to come because it was a source of water. So this was a, a trading post. So you can learn a lot by different uh, archeological excavations, but also there's certain places where you have source of significance too can also be modern day. You've seen how many people have been walking behind us. A site like this that carries so much history attracts lots of people and it attracts tourists from all over the world. So providing a cultural resource that can be protected is very important. You know, if you lose a place like this, whether it's just from not caring about it or 
never finding it in the first place or studying it so that people can learn about it, you lose a lot of tourism, a lot of money, a lot of visitors that can care about the region. They can invest money and time and understanding, which is great for everybody. It really helps the world understand each other. All right. Thank you for the questions, uh, San Antonio. Let's go to our next class, Mr. Thwaites' class. They're joining us um, from St. Thomas, Ontario. Uh, and I think he's got a couple classes with him today. Let's turn their microphone on and see how they're doing. How's it going, St. Thomas? Hello! You guys got a lot of coffee there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. A big group there in St. Thomas. Who's got a question? Brianna Debu. Wow. Are you guys going to be able to put this in VR? Virtual reality? Yeah, we are. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's the part I'm always most excited about. We have uh, all the VR goggles. And I tell you, when we scan a place like this, and when I'm at home again, and we have all the work done to get it on the VR goggles, when I put the headsets on, I really, really feel like I'm there again. It's, it feels so real to me that I can almost smell the place again. So. We sure are going to put it in VR. Go, go do a with your hats. And yeah, yeah. Look it yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you can check. We're at Virtual Wonders is the name of our company. And so we'll have it on our website and all sorts of places like that for you to see. All right. Very cool. So um, we still have a few more minutes. So if there are, um, I believe I visited all the classrooms. So if anybody has another question, give me a big wave at the camera. And that's how I'll know to come back to your class. So, and wow, that's tons of waving from uh, St. Thomas. We'll start off with you guys. Okay, let's see what we're doing. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Yeah. We get it? Is he off mute? Are you ready for us, Joe? Nice and loud, yep. Here we go. What, are, what kind of stuff are in the temples? Oh, yes. Good question. So, some of them were banquet halls. Some of them are little kitchens, and you can tell because it's black on the inside where they had fires from cooking all the time. Some of them were tombs where um, we would put our dead if I was navigating. And that's, I don't know, we'll, we're going to try to go over there, and hopefully we'll still have a signal. And what you would do, you would have banquet halls. They were called uh, triclinium, if there were three sides, where you would sit over your ancestors and you would have uh, a, you would have food and they think you know pay your respects all those sorts of questions so but you know there was storage for grains uh, there's storage for water so you have different parts of some of these different monuments and some of them were built during the roman period for example you saw there were big statues to some of the gods that you may have studied like zeus Should we see if we can take a look inside? Joe, should we try to go for a walk at the risk of being disconnected? Hey, I'm all for taking chances. Let's do it. Okay. Right. Well, Let's if we it. don't get to say goodbye formally, yeah. bye, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. But Let's go explore by the seat of your pants here. <laughs> all right. Excellent. So this is the obelisk tomb that we're walking towards. And it's called that because of the, you can see the four triangles on top. There's, those are obliques. And um, we already did laser scanning and drone scanning and our photogrammetric scanning in here and scanning with uh, bright lights inside so we can see inside the dark rooms. But we're going to take you over here and uh, try to get up on top of the tomb to show you the view and to show you some of the rooms inside. So the road that we're traveling on right now, there's the walking road. And then there's the road for horses and camels and donkeys. There's a lot of different transport methods used in the desert to help people go up and down the hills where we don't have much water and where it can get really, really tiring going up these big rocks. Well, Chris almost fell on there camera for you guys. Exactly like that. You're going in a circle. Yeah, exactly. That'd be great. So here, here, here for a second and check this. How's the signal, Joe? Can you still see us? We can still see you. We can still hear you. All, All right. right. There you 
know, his Kenny. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, uh, you guys can see Kenny up there in blue for to give you an idea how big this tomb is. And he's standing near the top where there's a room inside that we'll go up and show you right now. This is awesome, guys. You are amazing climbers. <laughs> And so you guys can see there's steps carved out. There's everything that you could possibly need made out of the very rock that the land is made of. So they were really useful in creating these cities. Instead of having building materials like wood, plants, things like that, they can just make it straight out of the rock. So here's our two. Pretty cool, huh? That is absolutely amazing. And this would have probably been a water feature full of water back in the time. So the water would get collected out here probably and come down and be stored right in this big hole. Hey, Corey, do you mind panning around behind you just to see the view? Yeah, do it, do it real slow rotation. So yeah, yeah. Real slow, real slow, real slow. You can see there that the gin blocks where the horse is coming through, those other monuments. There's not as many uh, Starbucks here as there is in my hometown of Los Angeles. <laughs> no, definitely not. This is amazing, guys. We'll take you in the tomb. Yeah, let's see what's there. inside. We might lose you here, but we'll give it a go. Yeah, <laughs> no idea. Let's start. Yeah. So you can see how black the ceilings are from the fire had in here for cooking. And over the right here, you can see what was probably one of the tombs where they may have put uh, bodies for a funeral. Yeah. Very cool. The signal held out. Oh, oh good, no good. kidding. All right. All right. We, yeah. Well, good. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed seeing some of the tomb. We, we love working here. It's one of the most beautiful places that we can imagine. And uh, it's been just a pleasure to work here. The people of Jordan are so nice. They've been so hospitable to us. Friends. And we hope they keep coming back for many years to visit them while we uh, show them some of the work that we've done over the last 30 days. All right. Amazing. Well, guys, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to hang out with us today. Um, it was awesome. We learned a ton. I know the classrooms can't wait for the VR when it comes out. And uh, we wish you the best of luck on the rest of the expedition. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, classrooms, nice and loud. Bye and thank you. <laughs> too for holding our camera she was uh she's she's our photographer and helping out thanks suzanne you did an amazing job nice and steady you made them look good yeah, <laughs> <really are. laughs> thanks. thanks all right thank you, everyone. see you later